Live now to the West Park Cemetery where my colleague uh, uh, Sipamanda Koke is still waiting. Sipa, I understand you're going to be in conversation with a uh, political analyst, uh, Professor Sipo Siepe. I wonder if he can help me understand what criteria government uses to officiate uh, categories of funerals, category one, category two, etc. Indeed, and the fact that you are seeing a big marquee behind me tells you that this will be in line with that declaration and honor that has been bestowed on the late Aziz Pahad by the President of the Republic of South Africa, Mr. Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa. So there will be a certain section of the program that will be led by the government. I see police officers arriving here. You know, they are busy with their final preparations and logistics because this is an official funeral category too. But Professor Sipo Siepe joins us now. Prof, thank you very much for your time. First of all, before we get into the logistics of, you know, different categories of special official funerals, let's just rewind a little bit and talk about the life and times of Aziz Pahad. During his struggle days, when he joined the struggle, he expected nothing in return. And then after 1994, when he served the democratic government and played his part in the diplomatic circles and international community, he was an internationalist. He was a revolutionary. But most importantly, he was just a struggle stalwart. Talk to us about his contribution. Well, I think to understand uh, Aziz, you must go back uh, to his roots. Uh, he was born to parents who were activists. And uh, it is uh, in that uh, family environment that he was able to cut his political teeth. And uh, you could actually say um, he belongs to those uh, men and women who can say the struggle was their life. Uh, for one, uh, he joined the ANC and end up leave, uh, leaving the ANC, uh, leaving what was the country to go into exile. But one must also understand that uh, before that, uh, these, these young people like Tabum Beji, his brother, Esop, were all in one way or another considered to be a problem to the then government. And uh, Aziz was also arrested. But it was after the Pivonia trial that they decided to leave the country. And uh, he has done us a favor by writing a book where he reflects uh, about his life as a young person and also as a political activist. But the most important issues that you find is uh, his role in the development of the foreign policy. But uh, one can, can also understand that because as a young person in, living in exile in, uh, in the UK, he was also part of of a group that was engaged in international mobilizations against the apartheid. And uh, if one understands that role of uh, uh, engaged in the international struggle, it uh, does make sense that when he came back, he would then be given a portfolio that he was quite familiar with, uh, the way he became a deputy minister and he became the longest serving deputy minister. But what is uh, most important uh, about uh, him is the critical role that he played in the negotiations long before Codessa. Uh, when you read his book, you get a sense of uh, that he was a key with Tabum Beki and others in the secret talks that were held between the then apartheid government and the ANC in exile. So you see somebody here who had always been very key in the formulation of thinking about the post-1994 South Africa, but most importantly, key in how South Africa, the new government, will position itself in the international world order. And the most importantly is that uh, even though he served as a deputy minister for a very long time, those who were following him, they said he was so close to Tabumbeki that uh, Tabumbeki felt that he should actually remain there because it brought him much more closer to be able to evolve what became South Africa's foreign policy. And he played a major role in key areas like uh, NEPAT, but uh, also in a uh, positioning South Africa uh, posture of non-alignment. And uh, where people saw him play a major role is when uh, they dealt, South Africa dealt with crisis in, in the continent, the crisis in Sudan, mm. the crisis in the Burundi, the crisis in the DRC. 
you see in those uh, engagement a signature of um, uh, Aziz Pahat. So he he has actually played a major role. But uh, for most people who are diplomats who worked with him, they say he was also because of his long standing in the area. He was also a mentor to many of them. You mentioned Africa as a continent and countries that have had to go through some difficulties and instability. But if you also take into account how he was instrumental, particularly when it comes to the Middle East question and the crisis there, how he understood South Africa's foreign policy, which he was at the center of in trying to play and put South Africa on the global map when it comes to trying to influence and change and bring about peace in the Middle East as well. Yeah, there was something about um, uh, Aziz. Um, he was uh, a person who was uh, non-emotional as a diplomat. And uh, most people said uh, he was uh, a person who made the people that he could talk, uh, he talked to uh, much at ease. So if you understand that uh, the discussion around the Middle East, especially between Israel and Palestine, they required somebody with that level of sensitivity to try to understand both sides but at the same time to position uh, the ANC's position with regard to its support for the Palestinian uh, uh, people. So the, and you, you saw that there was less, uh, what you call it, um, uh, challenges uh, uh, between, at the level of the foreign policy. Uh, yes, the AC will take uh, its position and uh, state uh, Israel as an apartheid state. But when it comes to mm -hmm. global politics and in government, it is always important that uh, you keep the doors open so that you can actually influence. And Aziz was found to be uh, very good in <clears throat> keeping those relations and the doors open for further negotiations. But uh, where you also saw him um, take a very strong position is uh, when uh, he took a, a strong position against the American-led invasion of Iraq, as well as uh, the NATO invasion of uh, of uh, um, the Libya. You, 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 he was very clear uh, in terms of the posture. But uh, again, he also led or was good in formulating what you call South-to-South -South, uh, engagement, where the grouping was put together to be able to position the South, not as a junior partners, but also as a, a bulwark of thought or, or a body of thought that can influence uh, the UN's uh, uh, deliberations mm -hmm. and how it uh, deals with issues, and hence the, the posture that he took on uh, Libya and Iraq. Very briefly, we're out of time. Summarize it for us in terms of the breakdown. Official funeral category one and official funeral category two. What's the difference? Well, the, the category one is often reserved for members of cabinet, uh, from the president, uh, cabinet ministers and all that. And the category two is uh, really for deputy ministers. And sometimes the president will declare certain people that he considers to be uh, to have played a major role in our country to be in category uh, category two. And uh, Aziz, as a former deputy minister and a longer serving, obviously would have uh, been given uh, the category two uh, funeral. And um, so I think it's uh, the president who has to declare that. But uh, the, that notion of declarations it also uh, comes from the book on the protocols uh, it's not uh, something that the president simply uh, yes. thumbs, uh, thumbs up but at the same time he makes sure that uh, uh, the status of the person is known and he makes a pronouncement of that hmm. sure Prof, thank you very much for time. That is Professor Sipo Siepe, a political analyst, unpacking the life and times of Aziz Pahad and his contribution to the struggle for liberation for this country and the post, you know, 1994 in a democratic state.
Thank you so much. That, of course, our senior reporter, Sipa Mandla Goge, they are on the ground as well as uh, Slindelo Masikani. We'll continue to bring you key conversations and coverage of the final farewell of the struggle veteran Aziz Bahat today. Mm -hmm. While still to